Look for a storefront, the woman in the gas station tells you. Older woman, older than you anyway. Yellow Go Gators t-shirt. Skinny elbows planted on the counter and Oak Tree and Madison. It's in a little strip mall next to a cigarette king. Says BCI on the window, but the louver blinds are always shut. Lights then puffs on her own cigarette. Cigarette queen smiling at you through the smoke. She's not going to say anything else, so there's nothing to do but go back into daylight. Strong sunlight and the heat of the car's front seat. It's cooking like an oven, and it isn't even noon. How can people live in a climate like this? Why did you even come? Okay. In a strip mall. Okay. Pass a drugstore, discount store, various restaurants, the Oasis, Red Robins, the home improvement barn, trolling and craning through the traffic and the heat, through the secret crawl of sweat on your back, sour elixir of salt and light, the thickets of skepticism, the forests of desire. Oh, sure, as you trawl down Madison, looking for Oak Tree, looking for a strip mall and BCI on the window. The louver blinds are always shut. What for? So no one can see what they do in there? So no one can see you, doing what no rational person would or should do, committing the cardinal sin of stupidity and need? Gonna wade in the Jordan, wade in the Jordan. Let the waters break over my head. And there it is. Cigarette King, way over on the opposite side of the road. So you have to pass it to turn around. Pass it and keep going, your mind advises. The part that still can reason. The part ungripped by pain. The pain that never passes, that never wavers or abates, that wakes you dry-eyed in the night until you have to get out of bed and walk, walk, walk it down, because you can't drink it down. Not anymore, right? Even when you get out of rehab? Even when they give you back your car? Where are we going? Nowhere, baby. Just for a ride. And the dog in the back seat. Don't forget the dog, tail wagging, and... There's a parking space right by the door, left just for you. The letters on the window are plain and nondescript. B.C.I. Before Christ Incorporated. Bullshit created inside. It can mean whatever you want it to mean. It can be whatever you need it to be. Isn't that what the woman had said? The herbalist, spiritualist, whatever the hell she was. She was Elizabeth's idea, but you were the one she spoke to. They'll be able to help you. Her hand, warm on your arm. Was she coming on to you or what? With Elizabeth right there. Elizabeth who could hardly bear to look at you. Elizabeth, who was turning to stone right before your very eyes, so, all right, you said, because there was nothing else you could say, nothing else to do but buy the goddamned plane ticket, take the time off from work, and what will you tell them? In the bed, in the morning, her face turned like a bas-relief toward the window, gray skies and weeping rain. At work, I mean. How will you get the time off to... I already told them, you said. A lie meant to soothe her. The whole thing was meant to soothe her, wasn't it? Make her look at you, come back to you again. Because without her, there was nothing left, and no one. Nothing living but the pain. And so you lied and left. Just another in a chain of lies laundered by noble intent. Like sticking drug money in the poor box. Does that make it better? Does it even matter? And why are you sitting out here like this, in the car, in the sun, in the fist of the heat? Are you stalling? Are you frightened? Of what? They'll be able to help you. They who? But the spiritualist herbalist had been less than precise about that. A healing group, she had called them, without specifying exactly what was done to whom and how this healing might be accomplished. Maybe just getting on the plane had done it. Maybe you could turn around and go home right now. Tell Elizabeth another lie. She must be used to them by now, right? It was wonderful, honey. I went right into the light. Now, that's what you do when you're dead, right? Where are we going? Nowhere, baby, just for a ride. Two women come out of the cigarette store, glance at you, 
keep walking. Will they go into BCI too? But instead, they step into the dry cleaners, come out carrying suits. Men's suits, dark and swathing plastic, suitable for funerals. Elizabeth wore white. Mass of the angels. Who even believes this shit? Her? You? Anybody? Are you gonna sit here all day? Go in. Go on. Air conditioning. A dry refrigerator smell. For a moment, you just breathe in. Cool air like a circulating gas. Like anesthetic. Not a big space, but adequate. Folding chairs stacked on a dolly. A card table with a phone and a CD player. Posters on the walls. Anonymous sunsets and waterfalls. Nothing overtly religious, thank God, and... Hello? A woman's voice. It makes you jump. She sees, she smiles, and... Hello. Again. She's young. Twenties, maybe. Slim and blonde. That pure white blonde, like Elizabeth. Like... Are you here for the service? Yes. You're a little early. Kindly. But that's fine. Would you like to read some of our literature while you wait? No, but you do. Hand out automatically, like on the street. Flyers for this or that, save 20%, save the whales, save yourself. And the literature she gives you is as bland as the posters. Just a lot of low-key, New Ages crap about the soul. Restoring the soul? It could be an advertisement for a facelift or a spa. So, maybe this won't be so bad, you think, sitting back in the folding chair. Maybe this won't be much of anything, and you can get right back in the rental car and head for the airport. Maybe even get home tonight. Home, to lie beside Elizabeth and... Sir, could you... From the blonde, smiling, struggling with the dolly's release, and... Here, you say, hands atop hers on the catch. Her hands are so small. Here, let me... As you help her free the chairs, a small tone sounds. Ping! A digital doorbell, and here come two more supplicants. A man your age and a very old woman. Oxygen tether and terrible bright eyes. She gives you the once-over as you stand there with the blonde and... Well, hello, the blonde says. How are you? As you keep setting out chairs, joined now by the old woman's caretaker? Son, until thirty chairs are lined in three neat rows. And all the while the door keeps pinging. People keep coming in. Why so many people in the middle of a workday? Mostly women, mostly middle-aged. But there are a few young ones, and even most dreadfully, a couple of kids. A boy and a girl. But fortunately they're both dark and fat and sullen. They sit kicking the backs of the chairs and each other as their mother, no, grandmother, keeps hissing at them to hush. She started it. She, you hush. And then the music begins, tinkling wind chime piano and, we welcome you all here, says the blonde in a louder, more professional voice. We're so glad you can be with us today. We're going to start with a song. Love is the light we follow. And off they go. Most of them seem to know the words. Is this a radio-type song or church or what? You don't sing, of course. You listen. Listen because you can't help it. Because it keeps your mind off what you came here to do. Which is what? Ask forgiveness? Weep healing tears? Dump all your guilt like a steaming load of shit and float away redeemed? I wish I was dead, you said a hundred times to Elizabeth. Said it as she held you and cried. Said it until I wish you were too, with her hand over her eyes, mouth drawn down like a stroke victim's. After that, you never said it again, but how do you think it is for me, you wanted to say, walking the floor with the pain. Monster baby no one else could see. How'd you like to be in my shoes? With nothing but memory for companion, 
Nothing but the sun and the non-smell of vodka. The dog in the back seat wagging his tail. She wriggling in the booster seat because its straps were bugging her, making her fuss and whine. So, you can be a big girl, you said, remember? Be a big girl up front with the seat belt. Which, of course, she loved. Up front with daddy. With the non-smell of vodka. With the dog in the back. Barking and barking, crying, and the scatter of bottle glass gleaming in the sun, bottle glass and safety glass, and your own teeth, remember? Your own teeth mixed up with the glass and you were sorting through it, somehow thinking if you could find your teeth, everything would be all right. As love is the light we follow, love is the dream we need, love is the new tomorrow, Love is the flowering seed. Jesus, who writes this crap? And look at them all singing along like it was Mozart. What are they here for, anyway? And the laugh rises in your chest. Black, metastasizing laugh, because what would they do if you started shouting? Calling it out like some mad MC. Anybody here with cancer? How about MS? Emphysema? Leukemia? AIDS? What's the matter with you, little girl? little dark girl with the big fat stomach? Is it you or your brother or your grandma who needs help? Let's pray. And it's a new voice, a woman's voice, sweet as honey and soft as smoke. A voice so compelling you crane your head to see her face. But she's nondescript, forty-ish in oversized glasses, brown page boy and brown blouse. With her mouth shut, you'd never notice her at all. But let's pray with such seductive power, such insistence that you let the woman on your right, one of the younger ones, take your hand as you reach for the person on your left, the man with the oxygen mother. It feels strange to hold a man's hand. The minister held your hand, remember? Until you told him to stop, took your hand away, hugged it against your body as Elizabeth moaned. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. We ask for healing. We ask for solace. We ask for what is broken to be made whole, says the woman with the voice. An incredibly sexy voice if you don't look at the dumpy face. What would it be like to make love to a voice like that? And we ask for healing, the woman says again. So close now you start. Is she talking to you? No, to the oxygen woman. Those bright bird eyes closing as the woman takes her hands, bird claw, liver spotted hands, strokes and kisses them. Ugh. But the old woman is crying, and the son is crying, and be healed, Virginia, the woman with the voice says. The words, one long caress. How does she know her name? Are they repeat visitors? Regulars? And does that mean whatever this is doesn't work? You have to keep coming back? You're not coming back. You want to be healed, don't you? Simple as that, huh? As the old woman weeps and coughs, the oxygen line trembling like a scuba diver's, going deeper and deeper. But for you, the disappointment is like a gust of clean air. Is that all this is going to be? Just like watching a TV evangelist? Just a lot of blow-dried histrionics? But what else did you expect? She'll come to you next, take your hand, murmur some crap in that sexy voice, and then you can... But she passes you entirely, heads for the grandma and the kids. Ah, Christ, it would have to be the kids, and praise Jesus, says the grandma, if you turn your head a little. And you do. You can see her tears, too. Long, clear lines on that round, dark face. Make him whole. What's the matter with you, Sean? The woman asks the boy. And now that voice is a mother's, a sweet teacher's. The teacher you most want to please, and... I got asthma, says the boy. His gaze all trust, his hand in hers. I can't breathe good when I play. What do you like to play? 
as the song on the CD changes, something about going home. When I go home, and soccer, says the boy, soccer and basketball, the girl breaks in, not to be left out. She takes the woman's other hand. He don't play very good, though. I always be healed, Sean. You want to be healed, don't you? Yes, says the boy, and then screams, just like that. Screams and bucks like he's just been shot. And the grandmother cries out, as if she felt the bullet too, and you jerk away from all of it, stumbling into the son next to you who stares at you like, what's your problem? As the boy shrieks again, a tea kettle cry, that sinks to a wheeze, then becomes a whimper. But now he's smiling. The grandmother is smiling. The girl stares avidly at them both, and better says the woman with the voice. It's not at all a question. She knows. Better now. And then it's on to the next one, and the next, and the next. Younger woman touching her breast, older woman with crippled hands, an old man with cancer liver, he says, with a deaf man's flat high volume. I got cancer liver. And you want to be healed? She asks them all as if she's checking it out with them first, making sure, sharp salesperson bringing the mark in on the sale, which is what you want to think, what you do think, except for that smell in the air, a definite smell like thunderstorms, ozone, except for the little boy, Sean, whose eyes are glowing. He keeps taking deep breaths and letting them out in and out, and two steps from you, the old lady with the oxygen tether has slipped it from her nose, a woman in a faded blue tube top is saying, I can feel it, I can feel it, to the fat friend beside her who's clutching her arm. Everything stinks of ozone, and there's sweat on the back of your neck. Sweat, though the room is chilly. Sweat, though you don't believe, because this is not real. This is not real. Who does she think she is, anyway? Billy Graham? Jesus Christ? Because some things just can't be healed no matter what she says in that seductress voice, no matter what you or Elizabeth or anyone else may want or long or pray for, because time runs only forward. Life runs into death and stops. Stops like a brick wall crumbling from the impact. Stops like a body flung into the air. Like a circus trick, like black magic, you watched her go fly, hurled free by velocity, right through the windshield. Why didn't the airbag work? Yours worked. You lived. She flew. Bright hair, black blood there in the street, like the worst thing you'd ever seen. It was the worst thing. And the dog, too. Jesus Christ, that's your dog, sir? And you scrabbling through glass for your teeth, head spinning, mouth a dark, wet flap of blood. And, oh, no, you said just like that. The simple round vowels of a clown, a liar, a killer. Oh, no. In simple dismay, because time had not stopped when your car had, and now she was dead, dead forever, and you were drunk and alive. Alive. Oh. Oh, no. Where are we going? Nowhere, baby. Because being alive means you have to live. Hospital, police station, lawyer's office, home. And home becomes worse than a prison. Prison would be a relief. No Elizabeth there with her swollen eyes and ice-cold hands and... Why? She asked you once. Just once. Everything there in that one word, and of course you had no answer. What answer was there? Because I was drunk because she was whining, because I didn't think anything bad would happen, because I wanted to. You want to be healed, don't you? And she's back in your row now, working her way down, hands on a massive woman in a hideous off-white blouse. She looks like a weather balloon, and she's mumbling and spitting as the music changes again, going not home but up this time. Going up, we're going up, we're flying, baby, Wee! 
Sandra, tell me, do you want to be healed? Yes, like a groaning organ, player piano running down, eyes squeezed shut, and in a few minutes it'll be over, all over, and you can go. Go into the light, and the heat, and the rental car, back home to nothing. Nothing. And now she's in front of you, voice and bad glasses and all, and her eyes through those glasses are not what you expected, not professionally kind, not measuring or shrewd, but something else, something you don't like but can't name. Well, she can't name you either, can she? But you're in a lot of pain, aren't you? And she not only knows your name but your nickname, the name everyone calls you, she calls you that now as she keeps gazing at you with those eyes, that look you can't bear. You're sweating like a pig, and all you want to do is run away, but you want to be healed, don't you? In that voice, like a lover's, staring at you in the ozone chill, staring at you like Elizabeth and the cop and the judge, and Caitlin, 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 flying through the air. Fairy princess, baby, gumdrops squashed flat as a bug. And you want to be healed, don't you? Don't you? With her hands out and reaching, waiting in the white room of your terror, the palace of your guilt, waiting for you to make a move, to say, yes, I do, I do. Don't you? The smell of ozone in your mouth, the flung glass glittering like ice.